Hi guys and welcome back to Switch Up. Thanks to all the new subscribers, we're well on our way to 40,000 which is unbelievable and we can't thank you enough. Thanks to the patrons that support us each month on the channel and remember in a few days time, I think about a week or so, we'll be giving away our next free Nintendo Switch game to those people who subscribed. Without a doubt, my favourite kart racer as a child was Crash Team Racing. It didn't have the liquid smoothness of its rivals, but it felt like I had so much control. I loved the mechanics and it oozed character. It didn't hurt that I could destroy my brothers at it either. Apologies if this review is a touch later than you would have liked, but hey, these things have to be done right. Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel does lots right and a few things wrong. What are they? Let's find out. The meat of CTR was always the adventure mode and that has been lovingly adapted for the modern consoles. It was one of a few areas that the original did that set it apart at the time and felt almost like they'd mashed a Spyro type world with Mario Kart and I loved it. It's worth noting you'll have the choice of playing a completely classic experience, sticking to just one vehicle and no customizations and tweaks, but I went for the new, in air quotes, version. Promptly picking the character with the fastest vehicle on the road, all the stats are shown up in the corner and you're dropped into the adventure. The story goes that Nitrous Oxide, an alien, coming to Earth and yeah, it's all very familiar I know, race him or else and defend the Earth. I loved the intro cutscene though, it had a real 80s montage feel to it and definitely got me hyped up to play as some of these characters. Unlike Sonic Racing on the Switch, the story is less pronounced and cutscenes are few and far between. You'll generally see one after beating each boss where they'll give you a key and then off you pop. That's just fine by me, cut the crap and let me race. Each area in Adventure Mode has several races to choose from, shown on your mini-map as flashing blue icons, and these can be undertaken in any order you wish. This works, particularly when struggling with a tough stage. Here's how it goes. When entering a stage, you'll have the usual three red lights before green. Timing the press of the B button just before that one will net you a hefty speed boost. Several crates will litter the course in a couple of flavors. One will give you a power up usable by pressing A with reverse fire also an option. The next are the Wumps. Wumps? I think it's Wumps. Little rainbow apples that will gradually increase your top speed as well. Once you hit the max, supercharging any power-ups you then get. It all sounds so standard, right? If this is all Crash had to offer, then to be honest, I probably wouldn't bother reviewing it. Thankfully, I'm sure you know what's coming. There is much more to it than that. Drifting was implemented better, in my opinion, than any other kart racer and still holds up just as well. As you begin a drift by holding the right bumper button and hard turning, you'll see a bar begin to fill. There's a sweet spot that's shown in a few ways. One of these, one, when the bar goes between these two areas, but also a new addition, your wheels will glow to indicate it's time to press the left bumper, which will net you a sweet speed boost. You can go by just the smoke turning black, but it won't give you quite the same boost. You can keep sliding and repeating this up to three times, and if successful, the third will offer a massive acceleration that tends to last longer and also busts a cheeky wheelie at the same time. Lovely. The skill comes from a few things here. Firstly, if you overshoot your button press, then your drift's going to offer little in the way of a speed increase. Secondly, trying to watch your car drift for the smoke or study the gauge, of which you can quickly select one of three by pressing X, takes real practice. But to play CTR properly without getting destroyed on each stage, it is an essential skill to master. Doing so meant I could blast through the game with no issues, whereas I can imagine some really struggling, as without this, it's a very tricky game. I will say, the game never did enough to fully explain this mechanic to new players, but now you all know. You can hop your car and doing so at the lip of a jump will net you a boost upon landing. The more air you get, the better the boost. Rubber banding does seem to be here to a degree, but the game will reward a skillful drifter. Often I finish to clear 7 to 10 seconds ahead of the competition. Anyone who doesn't use drift won't even factor in the races. The final thing with Crash is you have the quick turn ability, almost like a tightly controlled skid and allows you to do right angle turns and it's great for shaving tight corners or saving yourself from falling off. There are no invisible barriers here, so you better make sure you use it. To progress in CTR, you have to win the race. That will be the next thing that's gonna great if you're really struggling. You're either first or you're last, and some of the latter stages will test your skill to the absolute limit. It really felt fair bar one area, the boss battles. Here you race against different bosses once you've collected enough keys. For the most part, these involved racing to beat one opponent, who will generally be tossing some form of nasty at you. The reason they annoyed me was the rubber banding was so 
unreal. I would absolutely destroy a lap, only for them to be right there in front of me. I found that rather than try and beat them the whole way, the trick was holding a boost or some such and taking them out on the line. Still a little frustrating. The next major issue I've encountered are the low times. They are absolutely too long. In a game with so many transitions from race to hub area, you'll really begin to resent them. Now I know it is improved on PS4 Pro, but even over there the load times are poor, let's hope they patch it up across the board. The next area to cover is the vehicle customization. When you win a race, or even if you lose, you're given a persistent currency shown here. You'll also outright unlock vehicle shells, colors, skins, the whole shebang to make you stand out when you take your car online. From the main menu, you can take those persistent tokens you accumulate and spend them in the most loot box looking shop ever. Only there aren't any. Hey, hey, hey. this is a unique and surprising gameplay mechanic. <laughs> Online and local modes offer access to all the tracks in the game, of which there are a huge amount, and include the usual reverse modes you'd expect. Hats off to the developer for revitalizing some familiar faces. The courses are sublime to behold. I'd say probably the best I've seen in any kart racer. Matchmaking is currently a little slow and cumbersome. There isn't enough visual feedback for the player to keep you entertained while you sit staring blankly. The online experience has been hit and miss so far, with noticeable lag from other players as they almost become a slideshow around you. It's not ideal to say the least. Someone let me know in the comments, are these dedicated servers? It doesn't feel like it to me. It feels more like peer-to-peer. -peer. Local mode and split screen are here with up to four players. Battle it out in single race, cup race, battle, time trial, relic race, CTR, challenge, oh my goodness, and crystal collection. There is so much to keep you busy and it's customizable to the nth degree. Okay, so let's break that down. Gameplay is fantastic and challenging and skillful players will be rewarded. And for those less so, well, there's easy mode, isn't there? Adventure mode is as good as ever. The tracks are great, but the load times, not so much. Online's currently not as slick as I'd like. Overall, gameplay scores 17 out of 20 because the core experience, particularly adventure mode, is just so much fun. There are, as mentioned, a few smaller issues that need to be fixed to bring that score up even further. For the controls, I give them 20 out of 20. If you can tell me one thing they could improve, I think I'd give you a good counter argument. I mean it. The tracks are beautiful, but moreover the performance is on point. Reflections on the road, a smooth real-time dynamic shadow. I can take those slightly longer load times when it looks and runs like this. The real hit comes in the split screen with four players. The resolution drop is large, but the performance again remains solid. I'm thinking some hefty dynamic resolution scaling is kicking in here, but hey, performance is king, right? Handheld performance is also good, bar some slightly reduced visuals. Audio is weaker for sure than the visuals. All the character sounds are here, but there's not enough in-game chatter for my liking, and the music, while in no way bad, is just a little flat and lifeless at times. As a reviewer, you always notice when you don't notice the music. Visuals are an absolute delight. I'm giving them 18 out of 20. That would be 19, but the load times need fixing. The audio is just good. It scores 15 out of 20. The game costs £34.99, $39.99, or €39.99, and it's premium. You're paying premium and you're getting premium. It's as simple as that. In fact, I'd go as far as saying this is a really reasonable price in comparison to some others in the genre. There are 25 unlockable characters, I lost track of how many courses and more gameplay modes than you can shake a very large stick at. Undoubtedly, you'll find the physical version at a touch cheaper as well. Value scores 18 out of 20. So, I love it. That's it for me. I thought I loved Team Sonic Racing the most, and yeah, it was good. And I do love Mario, it's incredible, but Crash Team Racing feels like I am the deciding factor between winning and losing. My skill. Overall, the game scores a switch-up score of 88%. It's a must-have for kart racing fans. Thanks so much to all of the subscribers. The channel's growing nicely, and we couldn't be more pleased. For all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers guys. See ya.